What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today we have a video from Twin Sons videos. Now this is actually a video that's about two years old now, but it's a video called Five Things in Star Wars They Would Change. So we're checking this out. I'm going to see if I agree with them, if I disagree with them. If you guys find any videos like this or if you make any videos like you personally right there looking at me, if you make any videos you want to see me react to, make sure to leave links in the comments below because if I use your suggestion, I will give you a shout out. So definitely do that if you want to be like a YouTuber or you want your channel to grow. Make sure to leave the link in the description below because you know I get content, you get a shout out, we both win. Now with that said, let's check out this video. Hey guys, hope you're having a good day today. In this video we're going to be talking about 5 things that we'd change in Star Wars. This video isn't meant to be toxic or hateful, just things that we would have done differently if we had a say. Every word of what you just said. Was wrong. Your arrogance blinds you, Master Yoda. Be mindful of your thoughts, Anakin. They betray you. <clears throat> we understand many of you will disagree with these changes, but that's completely fine. We're all fans of the Star Wars universe, and what we like is what we like. Be sure to comment down below your personal thoughts on these changes, or if we miss something that you would change. Also, subscribe if you're new. Now, let's get into it. The first thing you would change is actually seeing Luke build his lightsaber in Return of the Jedi. There's a deleted scene of him completing his saber, which we think should have been left in the movie. In the scene, we even see Luke putting his newly made lightsaber inside R2-D2, which should of course later be launched to Luke as he's about to be sent in the Sarlacc pit. Furthermore, we think they should have even shown him constructing it from the beginning. This would have been extremely cool to see since we haven't seen much of Jedi constructing their sabers. Also, Luke modeled his saber after Obi-Wan, so this would have been interesting to see on screen. Next, we're going to talk about a change that we have. Um, yeah, see, I always liked that deleted scene too. In my mind, like my head canon, that is the correct scene. Um, especially when you think about the idea that where would Obi-Wan have the green lightsaber crystal from? It would have been from Qui-Gon's lightsaber, right? So I always liked that idea. The unfortunate part about that also introduces the idea that if Luke lost his lightsaber in episode 5, then he wouldn't have had one until the green one in episode six. Now I do know that the canon kind of addressed that now, like um, Luke had a yellow lightsaber for a little bit now in canon, but before then, I think part of the reason why George did cut that scene was because, you know, like I said, it made it seem like Luke pretty much didn't have a lightsaber for the last um, year or so. I think episode five and six are a year apart. And it's like, how can Luke go from being this person who barely knows how to use a lightsaber, who can barely handle um, a fight, um, in episode five to be in this skillful master jedi and and by episode six if he didn't have a lightsaber or at least some type of lightsaber training so i do really like that deleted scene but it does kind of introduce that that problem to the, to the entire plot the idea that luke has been training without a lightsaber this whole time it doesn't really make the whole thing add up so like i said while i like that deleted scene i understand why they got rid of it good make to clone war season seven Dave Filoni rarely misses, but the Trace and Rafa arc was a miss in our opinion. You were the chosen one! There are many valuable arcs that we could have gotten in its place, such as Boba Fett vs. Cad Bane, Grievous kidnapping Palpatine, and my personal favorite, the Dark Disciple arc. Dark Disciple is a book that was meant to be an arc in the Clone Wars. It entails a Sajj Ventress and Quinlan Boss attempting to assassinate Count Dooku. I am currently reading the book, and I must say it's very well written and interesting. It would have made for an amazing arc in the Clone Wars Season 7, had it been completed and aired. There is some good to the Trace and Rafa arc, but for only 12 episode season, it was wasted time and potential in our yeah. yeah. Next will be discussed. So, so I agree with that one too. I actually think that the, um, that specific arc they mentioned about the Quinlan Vos Adventurous arc, I really want to see that one. I think out of the majority of the arcs we lost, that actually might be number one for me. Because I really like Quinlan, and I feel like we never got enough of him. And especially now that he's going to be having more future, or at least they hinted towards it in Kenobi. It would be cool to see how Quinlan dealt with this whole Clone Wars stuff, you know? And to actually see Ventress die. Like, I was just talking to a friend of mine recently, and he actually just watched the Clone Wars. And he's like, oh, it was cool, like, they didn't kill Ventress off in the Clone Wars, so I wonder where she's at. And I'm like, well, actually, technically they did, but they didn't. So, I mean, if you read the books, they did, but, you know, the books can always be easily put into the non-canon section, and we could actually get a uh, Ventress in 
something like uh, Kenobi even like or, or something like that but um yeah I mean Quinlan's in there maybe maybe Ventress was with him who knows but as far as the what was it the the Ross and Riz or whatever that arc was I agree it kind of felt very weird to put those two characters in there definitely could have done a more um deeper link into it I kind of feel like maybe what they did was they wanted to put those characters in to kind of uh, add a little extra uh, wokeness into it uh I, i'm just saying it definitely seems like they were kind of out of place but um i don't hate the characters but i do feel like there were better arcs to tell the story for especially if you only have 12 episodes to do it uh, i think it has to do with ahsoka they wanted to keep the story much more about ahsoka and uh, the bad batch obviously so they kind of just pushed ahsoka into a narrative that that had her you know doing her thing so it is what it is but at some point, I would like to see the Quinlan Voss and Ventra story, if possible. Maybe we can get a live-action version. Maybe when we meet Quinlan in Kenobi Season 2 or a future season of something, maybe the Ahsoka show. Maybe he can reference back to it and we can see a, a, a flashback or something, but yeah. Discussing something we changed about The Last Jedi, which is a different director. Ryan Johnson isn't a bad director, but we believe he didn't do justice for the sequel story. The movie would be great if it didn't connect to a whole saga, but in relation to the other movies, it gets a little inconsistent. Mm -hmm. Episode 7 set up a lot of possibilities for the trilogy, but then in Episode 8 it fails to act on most of the things fans were excited for. This led to a feeling of disconnection between the three sequel movies, due to the difference in storytelling from J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson. Yes, the originals were directed by different directors, but George Lucas helped with each movie, so we think the sequels might have been better off with J.J. directing each movie. And there are some people who love The Last Jedi, and we respect their opinions, but we believe it could have been handled a little better. Alright, so this next- Okay, so... I, I've said it before, on, I'll probably say it more, and I'm not gonna go super deep into this video, I'm not gonna turn this into a sequel trilogy hate video, but... The biggest issue with the sequel trilogy, and I've said this for a long time, is the direction. They were missing that guiding direction. You had JJ's, uh, even right here on the screen right now, you had JJ's uh, episode one of the trilogy, you had Ryan's episode two of the trilogy, and then you had JJ's episode three of the trilogy. But the thing about this is, it isn't seven, eight, nine. This is episode seven. This is a different episode seven. And then this is episode eight and nine combined that's supposed to answer this one that completely kind of ignores this one. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just completely rough. I'm gonna leave it at that. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff that could be changed when you're talking about the sequel trilogy. So, but that's the way it is. Next one is also to do with the sequels, but it's a more specific thing that we change. Okay. We think Luke was not shown well in the sequels, especially for one of our favorite characters. I agree. I understand Luke falling so hard after failure with Kylo Ren. It makes sense for him to go into exile after failing his sister, friend, and nephew. However, we never got to see enough of a rebound in my opinion. I would have liked to see more of the redemption side of Luke's character in Episode 8. J.J. Abrams tries well to give us fan service and redemption for him in Episode 9, but it obviously would have served the movie and trilogy as a whole better to be in Episode 8. This would have satisfied original trilogy fans who so desperately wanted to see a fully developed prime Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. With all this said, I respect if you were satisfied with his character portrayal in the sequels and I understand where you're coming from. The last thing Yeah, I agree. There was not enough there was Luke was not treated well. I made videos on that before too. Um Like I said, I'm not gonna go super into this. I'll just say I agree. And we'll continue. The new change has to do with the prequels. We think if Darth Maul was utilized more, this would have helped the movies be more well received. While the story is very good in the prequels, Darth Maul gets quote unquote killed in The Phantom Menace. If he had been shown in each film, he might have even become as iconic a villain as Darth Vader. What if we could have seen Maul duel Anakin or his fall with Palpatine on screen? Luckily, since the prequels came out, we've seen the completion of Maul's story in Clone Wars and Rebels, plus he has become a fan favorite. But one can only imagine how cool it would have been for Maul to be flushed out on the big screen in all three of the prequel movies. Alright guys, those are the five things we would- I heard about that. I heard about the idea of Maul kind of being the Vader of the prequel trilogy. Um, and I'll say this. I think it would be interesting if they would have wrote the narrative that like 
in our minds, we think that Maul was actually the master the whole time. And then Maul would have like apprentices here and there. And then that's when we learned, no, Maul wasn't the master or something like that, like in episode three or whatever. And um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But then you, you wouldn't be able to get Dooku probably. You couldn't work Dooku into the narrative that works like great, you know? Uh, you could probably still get Grievous into it. I love Maul. But I really, I really love Dooku now too, uh, especially once you do like lore dives into his character. He's such a deep and complex character that he really just gets pushed aside because he's the boring old guy. You know, you have this Sith assassin and Darth Maul who looks like the devil and he's crazy, double blades. And then you have Vader, who is this big robotic machine man who can power through his enemies and, um, you know, he's big and scary. And then you have Dooku, who is effectively just an old man who talks a lot. And, um, yeah, it's obvious he's kind of the boring character out of the three. Especially when I was a kid, my friends and I would always talk about Vader and Maul. But we always would skip over Dooku because Dooku was just the boring old man. Now, as I have gotten older and did more deep dives into the character of Dooku, I realized how awesome his character really is. But it is one of those things that you have to kind of consider. But how did you guys feel about this list? Did you agree with it? Did you not agree with it? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to go to the Twin Sons videos channel. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Make sure to subscribe to them. I actually talked to these guys a couple times over the years, and they're always super nice to me. So definitely go check them out, subscribe, and, uh, you know, tell them I sent you. But like I said in the beginning of this video, do you guys have any cool videos that maybe you've made? Let me know in the comments below. And if I use your suggestion, I will give you a shout out in that video. But thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next one. Peace.